Hi, I'm Executive Chef James McKennis, and today I'm going to do my very first reaction video. I'm on Preppy Kitchen's channel, Air Fryer Chicken Tender Recipe. Now this is more of a commentary as opposed to a true reaction because I watched this video last night and it spoke to me in a manner where I thought I have to share my opinion on this. Well, today on Preppy Kitchen we're making some easy, delicious air fryer chicken tenders. So let's get started. First off, grab two pounds of chicken tenders and you want to give them a nice pat with paper towels so they're really dry. If they're So he's drying them because he's not going to flour them wet they're not going to hold on to the egg and the breading will add later the glue that'll hold which everything together is I don't want to talk over him but I found that super annoying that he would go out of his way to omit the flour stage in the breading process or a panada um, we flour sticks to everything egg sticks to flour and then bread sticks to egg now if you're trying to, I don't know, be gluten-free maybe, yeah, I can see skipping the flour, but you're not really going to be skipping the breading either. Is two large eggs, crack them into a shallow dish, and we're going to give them a mix. Give the eggs a light beat so everything is nice and mixed up. In another shallow dish, I'm going to combine two cups of panko breadcrumbs. Panko breadcrumbs are the cheat code for any air fryer crispy dish because they're really crunchy already. Yeah, and if you don't know, panko breadcrumbs are Japanese breadcrumbs. What they do to make them extra crispy is they electrocute them. So think of that guy that, you know, that movie you saw where they strapped somebody into a chair and gave them the buzz. That's, that's what they do to, uh, to the breadcrumbs. They basically send it down the green mile. You don't have to add a lot of oil to get that crisp, crunchy, wonderful texture. Yeah. You can add any of your favorite seasonings to make this. So what else is he doing here? To start is one teaspoon of paprika. So he's going to put his paprika and, one teaspoon of garlic and his uh, garlic powder and, Mix it up so it's nice and combined. into his breadcrumbs. Now, I would put it into the flour because it would put it... Really up to you. So I would, I would do it both. I would put some half of it in the flour and half of it in the breadcrumb. And the reason I would do that is because what will happen is the you want the chicken to taste good, right? So you don't just want the breading to taste good. You want them to both taste good. So I would uh, obviously put the seasoning everywhere. So the chicken, uh, and this is like when you see people that do like the buttermilk marinades and stuff because they want it to, to uh, tenderize it a bit. Uh, not that you need to tenderize chicken breast too much because it's already a tender meat. Uh, the flour directly on the chicken with the seasonings in it will help the chicken taste better. The seasonings in the breadcrumbs will help the breadcrumbs taste better. So there's a place you can you can kind of put a little bit of everything everywhere. And let me tell you why. These can be delicious with anything. You can enjoy them as is. You could dip them in your favorite sauces. One of my favorite things to do is cut the tenders into slightly smaller pieces. Do the recipe as is, and then you can dip them in any of your favorite sauce. Man, he's talking a lot. I'm um, probably gonna cut most of that out. Um, yeah, air fryers are awesome. If you don't have an air fryer, it's basically good marketing. It's a countertop electric convection oven. So if your oven has a convection oven mode, you just put it in convection oven and it's running like a, does the same thing as an air fryer. Some ovens, um, I was watching a good uh, product review and they it was a salesman, repair guy. He had, he had his own appliance store and he said, the difference between a oven with a air fryer button and an oven with a convection button is about $200 with no actual difference other than the labels on the buttons. It has a step-by-step -step for the sauce and it is so, so good. My dredging stations are all set up. Yeah, so his dredging station is not set up because he's using straight, straight egg. You could put, um, in culinary school, they, they tell us about water in it. Uh, so you... you you could have just put one egg in there for the amount of chicken he's going to do with some water and really the egg is there for the breadcrumb to stick to. It's not like you're adding any egg flavor to the dinner. Um, at my restaurant we use milk. Um, some places, my teachers at school were like, you don't want to use milk. I forget the reasoning why. I prefer milk. It just feels like it's a thicker, um, it's thicker, it feels like the eggs. I mean milk costs more than eggs but it, it just feels better with milk. I'm not trying to say you're stretching out the egg 
So, anywho's, you should have flour, milky egg, and then breadcrumb. It's so important because you need to have that flavor. So, sprinkle evenly with salt and pepper, and I'm using about one and a half teaspoons okay, of salt. Okay, that's right, salt and pepper right on the chicken. One and a half teaspoon of pepper. I'd probably add some garlic powder to it. Really, you want a nice even coating. Yeah. Flip all the pieces over and repeat. Now, working a tender or two at a time, we're gonna dip each one in our egg mixture. I'm using a fork so my fingers don't get totally gross. So but your fingers won't get gross if you do the wet hand, dry hand method. So with my left hand, I grab my raw chicken and I drop it into the flour. With my right hand, I move the flour to the egg. With my left hand, I move it from the egg to the bread. And then my right hand, the bread to the, to the counter or tray or whatever you're gonna do. Just before you start dredging, preheat your air fryer to 400 Fahrenheit. That's a little bit yeah, I mean, my air fryer has a chicken button. I would have just hit reheat and then, or uh, heat preheat and then the chicken button. Hot, so, open it up and spray the basket with a bit of oil. And now we're gonna spray the tops of our chicken tenders. Yeah, this is definitely the other part of this video that set me off. He's using olive oil, which is, olive oil has a low flash point. Olive oil burns at 400 degrees, 425, and he's using an air fryer set to 400 degrees and he's misting it with olive oil. I mean, one, who wants to put olive flavor on their chicken, like chicken fingers? I mean, you want to give your kids chicken fingers with honey and have it taste like olives? They're not going to eat it if the olive oil has is strong enough to impart an olive flavor. And if it's not strong enough to impart an olive flavor, I don't know why you're using it. I mean, he should be using a neutral flavor. Uh, my favorite neutral flavor is, uh, neutral flavored oil is sunflower oil. You can also buy the refill. Like he's, he's just using the wrong oil and it's, it's very annoying, frankly. Place the sprayed side face down in your air fryer and you want to leave a little bit of room for the air to circulate. Don't pack these chicken tenders. Yeah, he's, at least he's right there. You don't want to overpack your air fryer. And we're going to bake at 400 for six minutes for the first yeah. side, and then we flip it over. And that's like my air fryer will beep halfway through as a, as a, a signal minutes. to shake your basket or flip it. We're just gonna flip these over and cook them for about yeah. five more minutes. So they're cooked all the way through. So at least he's cooking them properly. Um, we don't have to worry about anybody getting sick off of this. Uh, though I'm sure they taste fine to him, but to me, they, they do look like they could be better. He could have put a little more effort into it. Well, that's been my review or commentary on air fryer tender recipe. If you like this, come on back for some more reviews, reactions. I'm going to shoot a few of these. We'll post them up and see how it goes. This was the first one. Hopefully I get the hang of this a little more and maybe it'll be a little more natural next time.